Hey, what's going on? Happy Thursday, Boise State fans. Welcome on in a, uh, another happy edition of the Matt Bowser Show. My name is BJ Rains. This is Bronco Nation News, bronconationnews.com. Joined, as always, by a happy Matt Bowser. It's game day, Matt. Uh, we don't do these often on game day, but I know it's an exciting day. Going for 15 in a row. Uh, it was kind of fun waking up this morning, huh? It's February 3rd, and it feels like March. I mean, the basketball intense energy is underway you got 17 and 3 wyoming versus 17 and 4 boise state battle for you know the top of the mountain west they're undefeated at home we've won 14 straight it's going to be a dog fight well looking forward to it quick reminder matt is uh, part of the number one ranked realtor in the treasure valley you can see the info there nobody sold more homes in 2021 than matt nobody is off to a better start in 2022 so uh, if you're looking to buy or sell a home please uh, consider Matt and his staff a uh, part of the Amherst Madison Real Estate Advisors, BoucherRealEstate.com. And a special shout out as well, Ridley's Family Markets, ShopRidley's.com. More than a dozen locations across the state. They got the at-home uh, shopping, the Skip app, the home delivery, you name it, they've got it. So pretty much all across the state of Idaho, and they've got locations in other states as well, Colorado, Utah. So uh, Ridley's Family Markets, a, a great, great sponsor of uh, us here at Bronco Nation News, and hopefully folks will please uh, consider Ridley's Family Markets next time they're heading out to the grocery store. And again, shopridleys.com. Let's get into it, Matt. Uh, I, I want to pr preview tonight's game, but I also want to go back. I know it's been five, six days. We don't need to discuss the, uh, the, the, the Marcus Shaver shot. We've done that plenty. It was a heck of a shot, yeah. three, three out of four games. But there were some other standout things about that Fresno State game, which I think give you momentum and confidence moving forward into this game, which we will talk about as well as here we are, uh, you know, doing this live about 10 hours until tip off in Laramie, which, by the way, you and I will both be there. We we, uh, we both may have a special ride uh, later this afternoon. So yep, we uh, I'll be there. We uh, you, you didn't get, you didn't get to see the end of the first Wyoming game. Hopefully, so we, we figured we had to get you back to hopefully see the end of this one uh, as Boise State goes. You're going to be on your best behavior tonight, Matt. They're going to have 11,000 sold out fans yelling against us, and we'll probably have. 12 of us in there. So uh, <laughs> if I have a voice tomorrow, I'll be very happy. Well, we just got to make sure your chaperone, uh, make sure you can see the end of this one uh, tonight. But uh, looking forward to it, Matt. It's going to be a lot of fun uh, heading out there together for the game uh, this evening. And uh, let's go back, though, first. Fresno State, and there's a couple things I want to highlight, but let's let's start with Max Rice. I think Max Rice, what he did in that game, it was the first time all season that he had hit multiple threes uh, in the same game. And we got some clips we can play as we're uh, talking about this. But uh, he shot in six threes in a game. He normally goes 0 for 1 or 0 for 2. And, um, you know, he shoots 4 or 5, and now he shoots 50%, and he's the greatest three-point shooter in the country. And, and he's a streaky guy, too. When he hits that first one or he hits one early in the game, you see him start to play with more confidence. He had the pump yep. fake there. And it wasn't just the threes in this game. Uh, he you played know, 31 I minutes in a game. Maladin had five fouls, zero points. And Maladin, Armus only got to play 16 minutes. Leon and the staff was having a scramble. Who are we going to put in there in a game that goes to overtime? I mean, Tyson had to play 41 minutes. Yep, and you see there he had the uh, the drive as well. This was another big play. Kijab thought he got fouled, missed the shot. There's Max Rice with the putback. That's Love a one it. point. That's a one point game with five minutes five left. Minutes and Max, left. Uh, you know, going against Robinson and some of the big guys in it. But this was the dagger up by three, four nineteen to go. Uh, we thought it was it, the dagger. Yeah. Good point. That they, they, <laughs> they called it uh, Jimmer for debt range uh, on uh, social media. Uh, you know, he was just sitting out there. You know, probably his hands were ready till you knew he's going to shoot it because his hands were just right in the pocket. And that's when you know he has that confidence when Max yep. Rice is uh, letting it fly from ten feet behind the three point line. Acott drew the defender in just a, a deep three. Thirteen points in this one for Max Rice, and uh, again three for six. First game all season that he's made multiple threes. That's now three games in a row. That he's hit a three also, Matt. He was like one for 24, and in the last three games, he's hit one in every game, hits three in that game. I, we, it seems like we've been talking about it, but if he can get going, which it maybe looks like he he's, is, that, that changes this attempt. team. If he attempts four or more threes, we're in good shape. If he shoots one or two, it's it's not going to be good. And the great thing is, is they're playing him, and then that opens up the driving lanes for Shaver and Acott and the others to you know not get helped off and people digging and trying to deflect the ball, and they're respecting his shot. It's just going to make the game easier. And, and more spacing for the rest of the guys. And you've been saying this the last couple of weeks, like shooters got to keep – the only way you can get out of your slump is to keep shooting, right? And he finally is doing that, and it's starting to Absolutely. go for him. Absolutely. He shoots five or six threes. He's going to make 40% of them. 
Another one that stood out to me from this game was uh, Tyson Degenhart took five charges, I believe. We got some of the uh, footage from those as well. And, and – uh, Make sure I'm playing the right clip here. Yeah, here's the first one. Three of them were on Robinson, too, which were huge. This was the first one early in the game. Robinson trying to go coast to coast, steps in front and takes one uh, from him. But this was the big one, the second one on Robinson oh, yeah. right there. 13-26 still left in the first half. And uh, Robinson goes to the bench with two charges that Degenhart takes. And here comes a replay. Degenhart's quick with that sidestep. He's very quick laterally, and it gets enough to – the quickness. Boom. Yep. Um take and he's not flopping either. He's taking it straight in the chest. And that was a big talk. Uh, here's one that he takes in overtime on uh, Deion Stroud driving into the lane. Uh, that was a big one with Boise State up in overtime. Uh, he took five. This was the one, this was the fourth one, I believe. There was another one that I couldn't find in the uh, second half uh, trying yep. to put the clips together on short notice. But the big one here was on Robinson to follow him out in overtime. Yep, those are massive momentum changers. Look at all five guys on the team, I noticed, too, oh. immediately come running over uh, to, to get to them. And, um, you know, the feet may not have been planted on this one when you see the replay, but they don't have to be. If you can square up the body and he uh, he does well, square up head, and then he lowers his the shoulder right, right into him. Oh. Yep. And so uh, what what is that part of it like for, a, for – I mean, what does that take to uh, – the, 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 you know, especially if going up against a 6'10", 270-pound guy like Robinson to, to, to t put your body in front of that and just take all those charges, uh, how, how difficult or what kind of special player does that take? Uh, it's huge, and it's gutsy, and it's toughness, and it's giving up your body for the team, and it's what every coach loves. And I'd like to see, you know, nationally where he ranks on tra on charges draw. I mean, I guarantee he's up there in the top ten guys. And um, also, as offensively, you get a you get a turnover. Not only is it a turnover, it's an offensive foul. It gets you in foul trouble. And then now you're going to be a little more hesitant. You're not going to do, you know, put your head down and go. You're going to have to be a little more tentative, and it really affects – your your momentum as an offensive player now he only had uh eight points in the last game or in fresno state game he only had eight points but in the uh, game against wyoming the first time uh tyson degenhardt had 14 points uh did hit two of four from three point range and so he's going to be another uh key key guy in this game and and uh you know what is the art to not flopping because I know uh, you don't want to be that guy that the referees know is just going to take a dive every time. And you know, again, in overtime, he took two and he took five for the game, but he was still squaring up. And what's yeah. that kind of balance where you, you don't want to just flop, but uh, if you can get in good position, they, you have to, take that they have to have their head down, their shoulder down, or their, or their forearm out. If they don't have that, it's going to be a flop and you're going to get a warning. So, um, and the crazy thing, I was watching the overtime game with Wyoming and Colorado State, the two best players, the big guys, they call back-to-back -back charges Neither of them really were, but I knew as soon as they called the one on uh, Ek or however you say, I yep. Yep. I knew they were going to call. I knew they were going to call the one down, uh, down on Roddy. On Roddy. On Roddy. I knew it was going to happen. That he was their fifth foul for both of them, I believe. So they ended the game. With he should have squared up and not even put himself in that position. You knew they were going to get that call. And that man, what an atmosphere that was, by the way. If it's anything close to that tonight, it's going to oh, be. It's going uh, to be crazier tonight because we got the number one on our back. Looking forward to that. Uh, here's a play. I want to show you this play, Matt. Let's talk about it. It's just the overtime tip-off, okay? Just a generic overtime tip-off. Boise State wins the tip. And, you know, it starts off as a normal possession. But watch the ball movement on this play, folks. I, I started watching it, and you start seeing the, the passing here that comes as they try to get in position for a shot. And right. the, re the reversals, I think it was four reversals on this play. They're Seven. moving the ball. They're keeping their feet. And guess what? A wide-open three. Nine passes. Tyson. I counted nine passes. Everybody touched it, and it led to an open three. And uh, we're going to get a uh, replay here as well. But just the, the the ball reversals from side to side, the penetration and the kickouts, uh, no one's – the ball's not sticking, Matt. I mean, this is good nope. team ball, huh? Yeah, nobody's holding it, which is good. And that's what's so tough uh, when you're on defense is you don't know where it's going to come from and you're closing out. The best time for an offensive player to drive is when the defense is closing out. Their momentum's coming at you and you attack the hip and it's the easiest time to get by them. If you wait a second and they square up, it's 10 times harder. Dustin chiming in, uh, back to the charge talk. I read he took four charges on Robinson, single-handedly put Robinson in the game. Uh, he took three charges on Robinson. Robinson did get called for four charges, but I think Marcus Shaver took one of those. Uh, he took five charges, I believe, in the game, but three were on Robinson. Um, and, I mean, that's got to be so frustrating for Robinson. He's an NBA potential first-round pick, and he fouls out with four offensive fouls. 
Yeah, and I mean, a, a charge is even better than a steal or a block because not only do you get the ball, you 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 drew a foul. So it's it's almost the best thing you can do. On it is the best thing you can do on defense. Well, fourteen in a row, and let's go back to the last Wyoming game, Matt, uh, nine days ago. And how how rare is that? Or what what's the scouting uh, angle when you just played a team nine days ago, only two games ago? These teams are going to be pretty familiar with each other. Absolutely, and you know the game here. Molinando played forty minutes, and Eek played 40 minutes and then you talk about their Colorado State they played 42 and they don't take them out they're not deep they are about six to seven deep and I'd never thought I'd say this but we're actually deeper than they are um so if we can get those guys in foul trouble and wear, wear them down like we did in the second half here I think it's really going to pay dividends he's not only the top realtor around he, he also brings the uh, correct stats folks 40 minutes for Graham EK he was eight of 18 from the field 19 points and nine rebounds uh Hunter Maldonado uh who had a huge game against Colorado State the other day he had 17 points uh, four rebounds four assists and then Drake Jeffries who's kind of their uh sharpshooter from the outside was three of six from three and had 12 points but I found it interesting in that game uh nine days ago Matt uh they made a big effort to get it down in the post to Graham EK and I heard him say on TV they're the number one team in the country in terms of getting the ball into the post and he may not always shoot it he'll kick it back out but he gets the ball in the post and they feed the post more than any team in the country and so their offense goes through him and it kind of reminded me of that uh, game last – the games last year against um, the big guy from Utah State, Kata. Yep. Uh, you know, Kata, where they, where they kind of let him do his thing and just didn't let anybody else beat him. And he yep. had like 30 and 20 or whatever, both games. Yep. Um, and, and, and in that one, there was a time where EK was just dominating them. They did switch and put uh, Tyson, Tyson Degenard on him. And then the last nine minutes of the game, for whatever reason – he didn't get the ball as much, and he didn't score a field goal in the last nine minutes of the game. He was dominating him. He had they couldn't stop him, and all of a sudden they just stopped giving it to him. I expect Graham Ek to get the ball often tonight, and I think a big key is Armouche. You know, he had those two cheap fouls to start the uh, second half, which I know didn't uh, you know didn't didn't uh, sit very well with you. Uh, you know that that was that gave him four fouls. They couldn't get him off in time, and when he was on the bench there early in the second half, they were just feeding him every time. And that is the one problem. For as good as a defender Tyson is, he's still a little undersized compared to a guy like that. And I think they need thirty plus minutes out of our moose tonight to try to limit yep. uh, EK's production. And you got to go at EK and Molinano on the other end of the floor, right? Because our guards are bigger and stronger than him. He's good against smaller guards, but our guards are bigger and stronger than him. So they need to go at him on the other end, put pressure on him, make him make defensive plays and potentially get both of those guys in foul trouble. Jeffries is kind of their glue on the three-point line. He played 45 minutes, all 45 minutes against Colorado State. And um, when you don't leave him and let him get going, it really it really helps your chances. Yeah, Nathaniel asking for the keys to the game, and that were a couple of them right there. But I, I for me, I mean, I, I think Malad and Armouche, you, you've got to get more from him. You know, he's just been so hot or cold. Um, and you look at what he did in the, uh, you know, with the foul trouble and stuff in the Fresno State game. He only plays 16 minutes. He only takes one shot. He does not score, and he has two rebounds. And nothing against Milad and Armouche, you know, on a personal level. He's a great player and a nice guy. But if you're just looking at uh, what Boise State needs to do to win, you can't have no – they're probably not winning tonight if Milad and Armouche has no points and two rebounds. No, and that won't happen. He'll be on a vengeance. Um, but they get, they've given up some points, you know, at home this year. New Mexico, they beat them by two, but they gave up 91 points to New Mexico. And if there the wasn't a charge call, they could have won that, that. That was a questionable call at the end of the game oh. that helped them win that. Although Wyoming, you know, the ball bounced the wrong way for them at the end of our game. I mean, you talk, they beat Utah State by two on the road, Air Force by two, Colorado State in overtime, and then they beat New Mexico by two. So, I mean, of their seven wins, four of them came at the very, very end. Yep. Yeah, well, Boise State knows a thing or two about winning games uh, in crunch time. Kurt saying his key tonight, free up Shaver. Uh, you have to think that, uh, especially if the game's close late, that, that Wyoming's going to be keying on Marcus Shaver Jr. Fresno State. Uh, for some reason, didn't, and he hit the shot. But, uh, yeah, Marcus Shaver, for, for all the big shots he's hit, Matt, he actually hasn't had, like, these huge scoring output games. Remember the Utah State game? He was 0 for 10 yep. before he hit that shot. He didn't have a ton of points, I think around 10 or 12 or something, in the uh, San Diego State or Fresno game. So uh, I, I think that um, – I guess he had 14 in the Fresno State game, but he was, you know, 5 of 12. It was um, A lot of those came in overtime too. But it does seem like he's been hitting the big shot. But if you can get uh, – you know, you'd like to get a little more consistent scoring from him in this game as well. Yeah, I think he's a second half player. Traditionally this year, he has been where he kind of lets the game come to himself and doesn't try to force it too much. And he's 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 done a good job in the second half. I mean, without him, we definitely have three or four or five more losses. Randy saying low post defense is the key to win tonight. And yeah, I I hate to put it all on one guy, but I think that the you know 
a key player for me tonight is Milad Nermush. He needs to be able to control the glass. They can't give up the offensive rebounds if he's not in the game. Uh, he It just depends how the officials are going to call the game tonight. And from my understanding, Matt, it's not the most experienced crew tonight. So we'll, we'll see, uh, we'll, we'll see uh, how they play to the crowd or how that impacts the game. But may, maybe a little more inexperienced, younger crew, which, uh, you know, I think the veteran crew helped Boise State at Fresno. We'll, we'll see tonight how, how that plays out. But how the game is officiated, I think, could be a big key because – Depend. You, you you mentioned neither team being that deep. Um, yeah, they can't lose. They can't afford to lose Ek and Boise State. I don't think can afford to lose uh, Armush in this game, or anybody. I mean, for that matter. But uh, we've actually had, this is the first time I can remember we've had more time to prepare for an opponent than they have. You yeah. know, we've had a nice break. Guys have able you know that were banged up, able to get a little bit healthy. They came off this late emotional win Monday night. Um, they probably took Tuesday off, and then they have a you know a day to prepare is all. Now, uh, we're getting a ton of comments here. It's funny when you win, Matt. People want to comment and watch, and we're getting great viewership here. Uh, Dustin saying uh, he's okay with if uh, with Degenhardt if Armouche gets in foul trouble. Yeah, and then, you know, um, Key Jab will have to play bigger, and, you know, we'll just play a little more small ball. But that's what they're good. They're interchangeable. And one guy it seems like every game there's a guy who's either in foul trouble or has a really off night, and the other one just pick him up. Jake saying, uh, limit the turnovers. The veteran team wins this one tonight. That would be Boise State if you're talking about the seniors and stuff. Ironically enough, the point spread in this one. Have you seen, I don't know if you've seen it or not, Matt, but uh, one point. Okay. One, one point. Favorite. I was, yeah, Wyoming is a one point favorite. I was going to see if I could yeah. get you on that. Uh, Kurt I'd saying agree with them about taking care of the ball. Wyoming, actually, when they beat Colorado State, they had 11 assists and 17 turnovers in that overtime game. Yep, yep. In, in an at road atmosphere, it's kind of a given, but on the road in a hostile crowd, you got to take care of the ball. And particularly, your turnovers can't, you know, the live ball turnovers can't lead to layouts, layups, and dunks, you know, and easy baskets for the other team, which gets the crowd into it and changes the game. Uh, Kurt saying Acott has to have a huge game tonight. He, he, uh, I, I was a shaver, I guess, we were talking to yesterday, and he said, uh, you know, they got a six, seven point guard, but we got a six, eight point guard. So, uh, Maldonado's a bigger guard, and, and obviously, Acott's a bigger guard, and Acott hit a couple uh, huge threes in the early part of that Fresno game to kind of give them some momentum. And yeah, I think ACOT's going to have to be big tonight as well. Yeah, it's going to be a collective effort. I love when they're huddling, the crowd's crazy. There's no no better feeling than when the crowd's going nuts and you hit a big shot and you just hear silence. We got uh, the comments rolling in here. Uh, Patsy and Peter Olson uh, watching the last game. Our moose looked sluggish. Was he injured, sick, or tired? Uh, sometimes I mean, it was foul trouble mostly, but I mean, sometimes yeah. you're, it just you don't always have the best game, right? To just sometimes it just doesn't minutes. go your way. Yeah. He played 16 minutes. I think tonight he's going to be, he's going to be on fire. He's going to be energetic, but he's got to be smart and not get in foul trouble. We got Alex asking, uh, what can we expect tonight when comparing the two games game during the gauntlet stretch compared to being rested for tonight? So I guess part of the uh, thing, Matt would be, you want to just keep rolling. You got the momentum, keep playing, but at some point you do need a rest. And this is the first time, as you said, they've had more than two days between games in like two and a half weeks. And so to get a couple days off, they came back Saturday at Saturday and Sunday off a couple days of practice and prep, you know, had to be nice for them to be able to prop their feet up and watch those two teams battle it out in overtime for once, uh, not have to be the ones going at it. So how do you see the rest playing into the game tonight? Uh, I think it'll be huge. I think a lot of the guys were beat up. I mean, you play that many games in that many states and that many days, you're going to be beat up. And I know Shaver's ankle's gotten better and some of that. And I think we're going to be ready to go in the crowd. I mean, with a veteran led team and Tyson might be a freshman, but he, He's maturity as a senior, nothing rattles them. I mean, you and me were there courtside at Utah State. I mean, we got down, nothing rattled them. They kept chipping away, and then, you know, they give themselves to the win in the last minute, and they feel very comfortable in the last minute when it's a tight game. Eric saying that uh, Maldonado in the last 10 minutes tried to win it by himself. That was in the first game. Uh, most of his points were in that stretch. Ike didn't score at all. Remember, in the first game, Matt, they, uh, Wyoming, we, we went into the game talking about how good they are from three-point range and how they are you know, one of the top teams in the nation in terms of jacking up the three. They were only one for four, I think, in the first half from three, and they come out in like the first minute into the second half, hit two threes right away. I think they made five threes in the second half. So I do think limiting their – uh, three points, and that's why they like to get it down to EK because a lot of teams will double and they can kick it out or make the extra pass and find the open three. I think, once again, it was a key in the last game, but they really have to find a way to limit Wyoming's uh, three-point shots. Yeah, and giving up threes or daggers. One of the threes they hit in the second half, we dug right when EK was looking at us. It's an easy pass right out, and he hits a three. And I mean, statistically, if you go 40% from three, think about 10 possessions. That's 12 points. You have to go 60% from two to have the same result. So three pointers, you know, mathematically kill you and they get other guys going, they get the crowd going and the game plan was stay at home and, you know, try to dig, but don't give up those easy threes. 
San Diego State. They've won at the Pit in New Mexico, Logan, Utah, Fresno, Reno, Nevada. Have not lost since November 30th. I, it, it's kind of just seeming like, oh, they're just, you know, it's just old hat. This is easy. But for someone that's been out there and been on the conference grind, Matt, of going on the road and back to backs and all the stuff that goes in with conference play, how remarkable is two undefeated months in a row, 14 wins in a row, all the road venues they've played? We're seeing the computer metrics, which we can talk about in a second, finally catching up. But just put into context, how amazing is this 14-game stretch? It's honestly remarkable. I mean, the maturity of the team and the coaching staff, the late game play calls, I mean, the X's and O's, it's it's remarkable. I think I read somewhere today that, you know, since 2010, nobody has a better record at Laramie in the Mountain West than us. And I, yep. the beet juice they're drinking or whatever they're doing, yeah, working because 7,200 feet doesn't seem to affect them. Yeah, I don't know if we'll take a shot of beet juice before we get on the plane today, Matt, or what. But uh, that that uh, I, I yeah, we we were talking to the players and coaches about that. It, it sounds great and all. I know the pickle juice is used at times for cramping and stuff like that. But for elevation, uh, in San Diego State, I guess copied them, and Leon was kind of mad about that. That now they they stole their uh, you know secret sauce. But uh, yeah, they're eight and four or eight and three, eight and three in Laramie all time, and they've won their last four in Laramie. Now last year they won two with no fans in the stands, but uh, yeah, something's working. They got a pretty good uh, success there. Number thirty in the Ken Palm rankings, they were number forty by the way going into the Fresno State game. They went to like thirty five, I believe, after that game map, but they keep picking up spots as other teams keep losing, and then other teams on their schedule keep winning. So they were 29 yesterday. They did drop one spot. So number 30 in the country going into this game tonight. They're number five in adjusted defensive efficiency. Wyoming is 53 tonight. So this would be the coveted quad one win. Uh, Ken Pomeroy, by the way, from KenPom.com is going to join me at noon. I'm looking right. forward to that uh, at noon. We're going to talk live here on Bronco Nation News social media channels with Ken Pomeroy. Find out more about Ken Palm and the whole statistical thing and just get his thoughts on Boise State and the Mountain West from a computer analytics perspective and what it means moving forward. But still number five in the country, Matt, in defensive efficiency. Some of the rebounding numbers are still good. Uh, but his model tonight does have 65-64 Wyoming. One point Wyoming wins, 65-64. But he's got it at uh, 55%, 45%. So it's basically a coin flip game. Somebody has to win by one. And he gives it to the home team, Wyoming. But I guess final thing, we, uh, you know, both got some work to do today before we head out. But uh, what, what's just your, what's your final analysis? It, 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 you know, the computers say it's going to be a coin flip. The Vegas spreads only one. Uh, what, what's just your your final thoughts on this one tonight? I think this is going to be the toughest road game we've had so far this year. Toughest environment, toughest travel, toughest road game, and I like our chances. They're so tough under clutch under clutch situations. If we're tied or it's a one possession game with five minutes left, you're going to see a big smile coming out of my face. Well, I hope we see that. And uh, again, the, the streak has to end at some point. I mean, I think we're confident saying they're not going to win every game the rest of the season. No. But hopefully, hopefully it's not tonight. Uh, hopefully they can keep it going. Again, quick thank you, Ridley's Family Markets. Shop Ridley's.com. More than a dozen locations in Idaho. We appreciate their support of Bronco Nation News, BroncoNationNews.com. And again, I frequent the CUNA location. They've got them all over the state. So the at-home shopping, the Skip app, all that cool stuff, just check them out, ShopRidley's.com for a location near you. And as we said earlier, if you're looking to sell or buy that home, uh, look no further than BoucherRealEstate.com. Appreciate uh, Matt for doing the show and uh, help uh, help return the favor to Matt. Uh, sell your home with him, buy a home with him, so we can uh, keep having him do these segments. And uh, it's uh, it's been a lot of fun, Matt. Uh, again, have not lost. Um, oh, we got a nice comment here before we get out of here. Your feeds are scratching my itch for BSU basketball news, spreading the word about Bronco Nation news around. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Spread the news for Boucher Real Estate while you're at it as well. Let's uh, let's get him. Uh, can never sell too many homes, right, Matt? We'll, we'll try sure. to do it. <laughs> but uh, appreciate it. And it's been a lot of fun, man. It's been a great two months and looking forward to tonight. And uh, we'll, we'll do our best to uh, keep you around for the whole game tonight in the stands. But uh, let's have some fun. And uh, we'll, we'll see you tonight, Matt. And Boise State fans, we'll be back again. Kind of. Ken Pomeroy at noon, and then post game we'll have uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, Pre-game, post-game live coverage from the Arena Auditorium. Great name, by the way. The Arena Auditorium in Laramie, Wyoming. Matt, thanks, man. Thank you. Go Broncos. There he is, Matt Bowsher. We'll talk to you later, BroncoNationNews.com. When it comes to concrete, we've got you covered. RowPaint.com offers custom concrete coating services for your garage, business, warehouse, and more. And we do it in one day. We are your complete concrete coatings solution.